All right, everybody. So I've been talking a lot lately about how right now on the internet, the right has a pretty decisive, you know, sort of death grip on internet culture and the general discourse in internet spaces, whether it be in areas that are directly speaking about politics and engaging in politics online, or just sort of somewhat tangential to political spheres you know it's just like they aren't really overtly political communities but they do tend to have an obvious right-wing bias on issues that are you know tangential to politics i'm sure you guys understand what i mean here these communities have been like in a death grip by the right culturally speaking for roughly a year now maybe a little bit longer and a large part of of that comes from the fact that a lot of young people, a lot of young Zoomers, have come to the internet and they've come, they're looking for an ideology. Not even ideology, actually. That's not what they're looking for. I misspoke. They're not looking for an ideology, they're looking for answers, they're looking for purpose, and they're looking for camaraderie. Now, there are a variety of other things that can obviously predispose somebody to being radicalized on the internet, especially if we're talking like young teenagers, but in this case, these are the things that it tends to be. And a lot of these young teenagers want to rebel from their oftentimes liberal millennial parents, and they find themselves falling into these so-called countercultural uh, communities online. Now, back in the day, this was the skeptic community, the anti-SJW community, the people who were complaining about feminism and Anita Sarkeesian and talking about how wokeness in video games is destroying them. And that just kind of died out for a little while. Like, it didn't completely go away. There were certainly still creators making that content and being successful at it, but like, it was a handful of content creators still making a living off that content back then, as opposed to today where it's like, you go on Twitter and you can't like go anywhere without finding... Oh yeah, by the way, I've got a fidget spinner to distract my autistic brain. Um, uh, uh, like, you can't go anywhere without seeing some brand new right-wing conservative figure you've never heard of before that's now getting 10,000 likes per tweet talking about the trans agenda. Like, how many new far-right figures have you discovered just in the last month because Twitter has been specifically boosting anti-trans uh, hate? As a matter of fact, I have um, uh, something from earlier today. This could only happen on Elon's Twitter. This would have been dealt with, like, so fast. Like, if, if it wasn't Elon's Twitter. Literally have... Hashtag Dylan Mulvaney is a man trending with 7,500 tweets. So, like, Dylan Mulvaney is one of the most well known trans people in America, in the world right now. And just this is a, like allowed on the platform now. Twitter is not in a good place. Remember, guys, the ads are only continuing to pull out. They are not coming back, and there is a reason why Elon is so obsessed with getting people to buy Twitter Blue. Do not cave. Do not buy Twitter Blue. This is a unique situation where single individuals choosing not to buy Twitter Blue actually matters. When you do buy Twitter Blue, it is a big shining blue badge that indicates that you are willing to cave and buy Twitter blue. It's not like buying Hogwarts Legacy or whatever, and it's like, uh, what, what, it, it's not like that. Elon Musk and Twitter, they, they're bleeding money right now. It's only a matter of sustaining this for as long as possible. Don't cave and buy Twitter blue or that weird Twitter crypto shit. Regardless, um, I've been saying for a while now how, like, the right wing culture, you know, sort of grip has not loosened lately, but I do feel that it's at its climax, and it's not going to go any further than here, and it is only going to end up destroying itself from this point and falling into a downward spiral. I think that we are a year out, maybe, from, like, just what we would consider to be the complete, like, falling off of, of this age of right-wing cultural domination, but, but a lot of people, when I say this, 
they get really like, eh, I don't know, Zan, things are really, really bad. How could that happen? And it's funny. It's funny that they get so, uh, uh, you know, I don't know about that, Zan. I don't know about that, Zan. The same way they did when I said that we were approaching another age of conservative cultural domination. They said, I doubt it, I doubt it, whenever I said that things were going to get worse very soon and the entire internet was going to be just overloaded with right wing, like, it's going to be like Gamergate in the anti-SJW era where you cannot escape the overt hate and the, the just droves of people clearly being radicalized and falling for obvious propaganda. I got a lot of shit for calling that out. And ironically enough, now I'm getting a not nearly as much, but still decent amount of shit for saying the opposite thing is now also on the horizon fairly soon. Like, this era of right-wing bullshit we've been in is going to end pretty soon. There are a candle burning on both ends. You know, twice as bright, but half as long, of course. The reason why I believe this is because of an indisputable fact that Gen Z is a lot more progressive in pretty much every value, uh, set of values you could imagine, than millennials, their parents. Millennials, of course, more progressive than their parents, etc., etc. There have been a few, um, like, pre the, like, boomer generation and around the boomer generation. There have been cases where, uh, newer generations have been more conservative than the previous generation. That has not happened in a long time, though. Uh, ironically enough, as access to information becomes more, like, rely, like, you know, re you can access it more, it's more accessible, it's more reliable, it's more readyable, readily available. Um, people tend to get more progressive. Just on a generational scale, you see more progressive people over time. And this has been a pretty much unfailing trend for decades now. Uh, and because of that, it is pretty indisputable that even with this age of right-wing cultural domination, the radicalization of young teens online, etc., etc., Zoomers are still going to be pushing for the most radical progressive change we've ever seen uh, in, in the future of this country. Like, no matter what. The vast majority of Zoomers are way more progressive than the little shitheads you run into online. And what really proves this is how the right is doing outside the internet right now. The, the right is doing well online... They're winning a lot of battles culturally online, and their channels are doing well, and their propaganda outlets are doing well, but electorally, they aren't doing so hot. And a big part of it is that the overt vitriol the Republicans have demonstrated for minorities disgusts many Zoomers. And with that said, the Zoomers are motivated now to go out and actually vote. And, you know, they're going out and they're voting, they're casting their ballots, and the Republicans are getting blown the fuck out in elections. They lost the midterms, and they lost this most recent election as well. That was, that was really big. I forgot which one, because I'm stoned. Um, and the right is not happy about this. In fact, here is a response that a Fox News uh, dude named Governor Scott Walker uh, on Fox News decided to uh, uh, say. He said... Basically, Governor Scott Walker, he's a Republican from Wisconsin, went on to Fox News to talk about the most recent election and how the Generation Z is a danger to the future of the Republican Party. Young voters are the issue, he says. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's let's see let's see this Republican Let's see this Republican complain about young voters being bad and cringe because they disagree with him and they need to have their right to vote taken away because of that. A larger issue here, we've seen it particularly in Wisconsin, but across the country, is younger voters. In Wisconsin, last fall, we saw about a 40-point margin that younger voters gave to the Democrats running for Senate and governor. We saw similar margins in Pennsylvania. Part of the reason why you have John Fetterman in the U.S. Senate in Arizona and Georgia and elsewhere. And just this week in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. we don't yet know the numbers by age, but we do know that Dane County, uh, which is where the University of Wisconsin's flagship campus is at, about 50,000 students are enrolled there. Dane County cast more ballots in the race for the Supreme Court 
than the largest county in the state, Milwaukee County, and in Dane County, 82 percent. A Nazi just came into YouTube chat, or not YouTube chat, Twitch chat, to say six viewers? Damn, you fell off. This is why I still keep the Twitch stream going, and, and still keep that chat up. So that I can, so I can see the random Nazis that specifically go to my Twitch chat to say that. Does he know? Percent of those votes went for the radical, and so unless we turn young people around, and it's not as simple as one campaign ad or some sort of a coalition. This is years of liberal indoctrination coming home right. to roost, and we've got to turn it around if we're going to win again. The larger issue here, we've seen it particularly in Wisconsin, but across the country, is younger voters in Wisconsin. Oh, uh, repeated. Great. Yeah, so basically what he said here is that younger voters are, are basically voting overwhelmingly Democrat, and you know, by younger voters, we're talking Gen Z. And every year there are more Gen Zers hitting voting age. And most of Gen Z is really progressive and hasn't hit voting age yet in America. So there is a very large portion of future voters very much on the horizon, like especially in the 2024 election, that are going to be voting Democrat hard very very hard they'll be voting democrat and that's gonna fuck the republicans over and i think they know it and because of that they've been advocating for uh the voting age to be increased some republicans want to raise voting age after gen z midterm turnout as gen z headed to the polls this week conservative commentators had a message for young voters Please stop. Tuesday's midterm election saw Gen Z come out strong for Democrats, including for their generation's first U.S. representative, Maxwell Frost, a 25-year-old Democrat from Florida. The young blue bloc left uh, Fox News personalities dismayed, with other conservative voices suggesting that the minimum voting age be raised from 18, currently enshrined in the Constitution, to 21 or 28. The ones that argue 28 are, are the ones who say uh, that, that like to cite that one made up stat that people uh, all become conservative by 28 years old unless they're mentally ill. It's not a real stat. It's like a 4chan post, but they call it a stat because when a conservative says they have stats, they mean they have a 4chan green text saved in their hard drive in their memes folder. The fact that these youth voters are coming in so strong in an off year is very concerning, Fox News commentator jo Jesse Waters lamented on Wednesday uh, Wednesday night. That's the thing you got to remember, by the way. These were tons of young voters coming in droves to vote Democrat during a non-main election. It was a midterm. A midterm, dude. It was a midterm, and the Republicans got washed. They're scared. They are scared. It looks like they've been brainwashed. This new generation is totally brainwashed because a lot of these single women who vote 37 spreads for Democrats are teaching all of our younger generation in these schools, and they are polluting their minds, and then they grow up, and they're in their 20s, and then they vote for leftists. Uh, so that is what Jesse Waters said in a uh, in a Fox News segment, I suppose. These 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 single women who vote Democrat are teaching our younger generation in the schools and polluting our kids minds to make them grow up and vote for leftists. Uh Exit polling shows strong youth support for Democrats, typically on issues like climate change, reproductive rights, and guns. Voters aged 18 to 24, all of whom fall into Gen Z, voted 61% for Democrats, while the 25 to 29 age group, some of whom are Gen Z, voted 65% blue. Oh, you love to see it. You love to see it. Even the 25 to 29-year-olds are overwhelmingly voting blue. God damn. Woof. It's good to see. And that's not even counting the already overwhelming uh, Democrat majority in terms of the voting population anyway. No, well, it, I think 25 still counts as Zoomer, doesn't it? How, what is the oldest uh, uh, 
edge of Zoomer. The early 2010s as the ending birth years. Okay. 23. Oh, wait, holy shit. So, yeah, I'm the oldest... I'm the oldest a Zoomer can possibly be. Okay. Because I was born in 1999, so I'm the oldest a Zoomer can be. Okay. Epic. Well, the Republicans are f***ing scared. And I couldn't be happier. Because scared Republicans make me happy.